Hey, my name is Milan and welcome to the first video in a series of videos that I'm planning to make about implementing webhooks in .NET. In this first video, I just want to cover what webhooks are, how and when you should use them, and I'll show you how you can implement a simple webhook system that works in memory. I'll start by explaining what webhooks are and how you can use them. Let's say that we have two applications, a client application, and mind you, this could be a backend service. It doesn't have to be a client side application and a service provider, which is the actual API or service that we are building. And we are the ones offering a webhook. So what does the client application do? The client registers for a webhook that we are providing and gives us a URL where we can send the webhook when something happens. So this is essentially a way for two applications to communicate with each other using HTTP and it's a push-based communication approach. This means that the service provider, which is the application that we are maintaining, is going to send a request to the webhook URL when something significant happens. And this is very similar to event-driven architecture if you are looking for something to compare it to. So what happens next? After we register for the webhook, sometime in the future, the event that we register for occurs. And it's important to note that this event occurs in our service provider. The service provider is then going to send a post request with a predefined payload to the webhook URL that we specified when we were registering for this webhook. Let's say that the client application returns 200 OK, this completes the webhook flow, and we are done with processing the webhook. The client application, the one that was requesting the webhook, can now process this data asynchronously, and our service continues to serve any other requests that it needs to. Now, there are also some alternative scenarios that we can explore. The first one is what happens if the initial request sending the webhook payload fails? Well, in that case, we need to implement a retry mechanism so we can try a couple of more times, send the request to the webhook URL, hoping that it's going to succeed. And in most cases, it will. And we're going to get back a 200 OK response so that we can complete the webhook request. But there's also a situation where the webhook fails even after retries, and then we have to implement some sort of compensation mechanism. We're going to discuss this in one of our future videos. Another interesting topic to consider when it comes to webhooks is how do we verify that the webhook URL that was provided to us in the webhook subscription is actually valid. We could implement some sort of challenge mechanism, and this is also something that we're going to explore in a future video. So what are the benefits of using webhooks for implementing service-to-service -service communication over HTTP? First of all, this is a push-based or event-driven approach, and it means it's more efficient. Instead of the client application having to pull our system, for when an update is completed, we can implement a webhook where we are the ones notifying the downstream service when something significant happens. So this is much more resource efficient. It allows our service to handle more requests because it doesn't have to deal with polling. Now, of course, there are some drawbacks. Implementing a webhook system and doing it properly is definitely not simple. You'll see in my future videos what are some of the things that you have to consider, but at the tip of the iceberg, we have to deal with failures, retries, Security is a very big concern when implementing webhooks. And of course, we'll have to think of a smart way how we're going to scale our webhook implementation. You'll see that this is a very interesting challenge. And now let me show you how we're going to implement the most basic support for webhooks in a .NET 9 API. All I have is an in-memory repository for some orders. And I have two endpoints where I can send a post request to create an order and a get endpoint where I can list the orders that I created. We have the order class representing our one simple entity. So let's go ahead and create another one that's going to represent a webhook. So I'm going to start by introducing another type. So let me create a class. I'll call it webhook subscription. And I'm actually going to make this a record. So let me say public sealed record. And I'll even make it a positional record because I only want a few properties on this type. So the first thing I'll need is a way to identify my subscription. So I'm going to assign an ID property. Then I'm going to need the event type. And this is going to be the reason why I'm actually sending a webhook. And then I'll need a webhook URL where we are going to send the webhook payload and we can also create a date time field or property, let's call it created on UTC. So this is going to be my webhook subscription that the client application is going to request. And I'm going to create another type that I'm going to use for my post request to actually create a subscription and it's going to contain the event type and the webhook 
URL. The next thing I'll need is a way to persist my webhook subscriptions so that I can actually retrieve them and then send a request to the webhook URL. Now I'm going to create an in-memory repository identical to what I did for my orders and we're going to improve on this in our future videos. So let's call this the in-memory webhook subscription repository and I'll change the type inside from an order to a webhook subscription. Awesome. So let's move this into its own file and I will have to register this with dependency injection. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just copy what I had here and I'll specify in memory webhook subscription repository. Now, when it comes to the actual implementation, the get all method isn't all too useful. What I'm actually looking for is a way to retrieve webhook subscriptions based on the event type. So let's create a method like that, that accepts an event type argument. And then we're going to filter on the orders where the subscription event type is equal to the event type argument that we get. So let's call to list on this. And I'm going to rename the backing field from orders to subscriptions. So this is all I need for my in-memory repository. Now let's actually create an endpoint where I can register for a webhook. I'll create a post endpoint using minimal APIs. And let's say the route is webhooks subscriptions. So what do I need to do here? I need to accept a create webhook request. This is going to be my request body. And then I'll need my in-memory webhook subscription repository. Let's call it subscription repository. And the implementation is going to be very straightforward. And this is because everything works in memory. So let's create my webhook subscription type. Let's call it subscription and I'll just call the constructor and I need to provide a new ID and then the event type and the webhook URL are going to come from my request. Then I can specify date, time, UTC now and I have my webhook subscription. So now I can use my subscription repository to add the actual subscription and I can return results dot okay and let's just return the subscription that we created so this is our simple implementation now when i start my api i'll be able to send a post request to this endpoint and subscribe to an event now what are the event types that i want to support let's say that after we create an order we want to publish an order created event but in our system instead of publishing an event to a message broker we want to dispatch an http request to any subscribed webhook urls so you can see how this is similar to event driven systems in one way but it's slightly different when it comes to the communication approach the main use cases for webhooks are integrating with systems that you don't own for example, most popular payment providers provide webhook endpoints where you can subscribe to notable events. For example, Stripe offers webhooks for when a payment is made, when a payment fails, and so on. I also had to implement similar functionalities in the past. For example, I was working on a system where you could upload a file an audio file and the system was responsible for using AI to transcribe the file and generate a text document. And it would notify you that the text document is available by sending you a webhook that you provided in your initial request. So we already have this in place. We have our post endpoint for creating subscriptions. Now we need a way to dispatch our webhooks. So I'll create another folder. Let's call it services. And I'm going to add another type inside. And this is going to be my webhook dispatcher. I'll make this internal and sealed. And what are going to be my dependencies? I'll need an HTTP client because I'm going to be sending HTTP request. And then I'll also need an in-memory webhook subscription repository. Let's create that. So let me just align this vertically. And let's say that this exposes just one async method called dispatch async, where you can dispatch a webhook request for a given event type and you can also provide the payload now i'm going to use an object because my payload won't be strongly typed and then the implementation is going to be more or less simple i need to access my repository and find any subscriptions for the provided event type then i can iterate over the subscriptions and for each loop and for each webhook subscription, I want to send a respective webhook request. So my request object is going to be an anonymous type. Let's go ahead and initialize some of the properties. Let's say that I assign it a new ID by initializing a GUID. Then I'll provide an event type 
from the webhook subscription. I'll also provide a subscription ID as the webhook subscription ID. Then let's provide a timestamp for when we send the webhook request. And let's also provide the data that is just going to contain my payload. So then what am I going to do? I'll say HTTP client post as JSON async, and I'll send a post request to the webhook URL, and I will be sending my anonymous request object. It will be serialized as a JSON object and sent to the respective URL. So now the next thing I need to do is to register this as a service. I will say builder services, at HTTP client, and I'll just register the webhook dispatcher as a type client. This is why I can inject an HTTP client using dependency injection. And the only thing that's left to do is to actually use the webhook dispatcher. And I'll do that in my post endpoint when I'm creating the order. So let's inject the webhook dispatcher. I'll make this asynchronous. And let's say after we complete adding the order, I can say webhook dispatcher dispatch async and for example the event name could be order created when it comes to the payload you can decide what that's going to be i'm just going to pass in the entire order but you don't have to do this you can create a custom schema just for the payload that can contain a redacted set of fields so now let's actually try this implementation out and i'll show you how you can test your webhooks i'll use a simple service called webhook.site that gives you a unique url that you can use for posting your webhooks and I'm going to copy the unique URL that I was assigned. With the application running in the background, I'm first going to send a post request to my webhook subscriptions endpoint and I specified my webhook URL. The event type that I'm subscribing for is order created. So let's go ahead and send the request. You can see it lands in our minimal API endpoint and I'm going to remove this breakpoint and I'll create two more webhook subscriptions. And now let's go ahead and create an order. So we create an in-memory instance added to the repository. And finally, we're going to dispatch the order created webhook. So let's go into the implementation. We're going to retrieve our webhook subscriptions from the repository. Now, obviously, there should be some persistence mechanism like a database where you won't risk losing data. In our initial implementation, this will be just a simple in-memory list. So now I'm going to iterate over each of the webhook subscriptions and I'll send a post request using the HTTP client. So let me hit continue. This is going to complete. And if I head over to webhook.site, you're going to see that we received free post requests. This is because we had free webhook subscriptions. And here you can see some of the details for our post request. So it contains the webhook payload with the ID, the event type, the subscription ID, the timestamp for when we sent the webhook request. And it also contains our custom payload representing the order. We have two more requests because we had free subscriptions, but they all contain the same data because they subscribe to the same event. So this is a simple way how you can obtain a throwaway URL to use for testing your webhooks. And in the future videos in this series, we're going to explore how we can improve on this webhook implementation. We'll start by implementing support for persistence with a database. And then we're going to discuss how we can handle failures, how we can improve security and scalability. So if you don't want to miss the upcoming videos in this series, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when they release. If you want to continue your learning, check out this video next. Go ahead and smash the like button under this video. And until next time, stay awesome.